Hi guys, this is Ms. Gold. Today's lesson is Module 3, Lesson 10, Graphing Solutions to Inequalities. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students graph solutions to inequalities, taking care to interpret the solutions in the context of the problem. In order to graph inequalities, once you have solved them, you really want to use what's called the DISC method. D stands for draw, meaning draw a number line and circle at the end point, the end point being the number that your variable is greater than or less than two. I is where you decide if you're going to include by looking at the inequality sign to determine whether the circle should be solid or empty. If the inequality is simply greater or less, we would have an open circle because it means that the number is not included. If it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that would mean a closed circle because the number is included in the solution. So if it's included, it's closed. If it's not included, it's open. Then you're simply going to shade in the correct direction by creating an arrow in the direction of the solution. And then finally, do a quick check to substitute your value into the solution to make sure that it, the inequality is true the way you graphed it. So let's do one example to show this. A local car dealership is trying to sell all the cars that are on the lot. Currently, it has 525 cars, and the general manager estimates that they will consistently sell 50 cars per week. Estimate how many weeks it will take for the number of cars on the lot to be less than 75. Write an inequality that can be used to find the number of W full week. Since W is the number of full or complete weeks, then W1 equals the end of week one. So we're going to create an inequality given this scenario. So we're starting with 525 cars. If we're selling cars, the number of cars on the lot would reduce, and they're reducing at a rate of 50 cars per week, which we would show as 50 times W. What we're looking for is the situation when this number of cars will be less than 75. So let's go through and solve this. The first thing I'm going to need to do is subtract 525 from both sides. That will give me, please do not forget, don't lose this negative. Negative 50W is less than, I just subtracted so I'm not flipping my inequality. We get negative 450. And then I have multiplication by negative 50 so I'm gonna divide by negative 50. Now in this case, I did divide by a negative number so I need to flip my inequality leaving me with W is greater than nine. So we are going to put our nine, usually right in the middle here, and you can label some of the numbers on either side of this, but you don't have to label all of them. And we're gonna go through the disk method. So we do a circle at the end point, the end point being nine. So I'm gonna to go to nine. I'm gonna go just above it. We're gonna graph above. It's a little hard to graph on the line because you won't be able to see your arrow depending on what type of tool you're gonna to use. So let's just put it just above the line, just kind of floating above it. That's the D. The I is where we ask ourselves, do we include this? So if I read through this, it says W is greater than nine. That means nine is not part of the solution because it doesn't say or equal to. So I'm gonna leave it an open circle. Now, if it was closed, if there was a line underneath this and nine was included, we would shade in the circle. Then I need to put an arrow pointing in the direction where W is greater than nine, meaning the number of weeks is greater than nine. So I simply interpret that as the number of weeks is greater than nine. That means numbers that are bigger than nine. So over on this side of the number line, the numbers are bigger than nine. So I do an arrow pointing in that direction. Let's interpret the solution in the context of the problem. This is basically saying it will take the dealership more than nine weeks to get less than 75 cars on the lot. Now let's verify our solution. We didn't take a minute to do our C 
part of our disk method, which is to check. And it's as simple as this. We just need to pick a number that is in the solution. So here we have 10 is probably the easiest one. And you just put it in for your variable. So this would read 10 is greater than nine. That's true. So therefore we did shade in the right direction. Now, if our arrow was going this way, I always like to choose zero um, because it's easiest number to plug in there. Zero is greater than nine is false. So we know that we should have shaded this way. So we know we were correct in the first place. So let's just verify our solution by plugging it into the original problem. If I plugged in W equals nine, which should not be part of our solution, this should not work. So let's plug this in. 525 minus 50 times nine needs to be less than 75. Well, we have 525 minus 50 times nine, which is 450. When I subtract those, I get 75. That's false, which is what we expected. Now I'm gonna actually go up here. We were out of room a little bit. So let's go up here. W equals 10 is in our solution set. So when we plug this in, this one should work. 525 minus 50 times 10 is less than 75. So here we have 525, 50 times 10 is 500. When I subtract those two, we get 25 is less than 75. And that is a true statement. So again, that verifies that we found the correct solution.